Can Yuta Okotsu really save Jujutsu Kaisen at the level that Yuta has reached after possessing his Sensei Gojo's body? Yuta has become the strongest asset that the sorcerers can use versus Sukuna. However, with all of that strength, it's not without its downsides. Nothing has changed the fact that Yuta is not quite like Gojo in terms of his skill. Even with all of the special training that he went through, it's not yet amounted to Yuta reaching Gojo's full potential. So of course it begs the question, what will all of this effort amount to? I mean, if a major character like Gojo Satoru was brought back as a zombified weapon, then they surely cannot waste this. At this point in time, Sukuna is just about in the weakest state that he's been in since he transferred formed and i'm certain from the moment gojo gave his life in this effort that solidified sukuna's strength would continue to dwindle during this arc it makes the most sense that sukuna would probably remain nerfed until his demise or the end of this shinjuku arc because otherwise it would diminish all of the work that has led up to this point however despite his nerfs and all the trouble that's been gone through sukuna is still shinjuku's strongest sorcerer and with this current chapter we are seeing infinity versus amplification at first glance it actually seems like yuta has the advantage in fact this brief skirmish reveals a bit about a domain expansion clash between shinjuku gojo versus a han era sukuna currently sukuna cannot use the world slash because that move requires sukuna to use his left and his right hand for a hand sign plus another free hand in order to aim the trajectory for his palm and right now he only has two right arms which he cannot do much with in fact he probably couldn't even use hollow wicker basket but after launching his malevolent shrine domain expansion there's not really a way other than domain amplification for sukuna to bypass the infinity it's almost in tandem with chapter 228 where gojo points out that sukuna has no means of attack other than to use amplification while the sure hits cancel out and this has been proven to give gojo a clear edge in those three minutes while his domain expansion can last even during this chapter since yuta has used this small dense domain, Sukuna has made no attempt to even break it from the inside. Though unfortunately for Yuta, there are a number of drawbacks when it comes to this transformation. First being that Rika is no longer haunting Yuta's soul. So that means Yuta is stuck with Gojo's limitless curse technique via Kenjaku's curse technique. So all his copy techniques are no longer available to him. However, now Yuta has one of the strongest techniques of all time, the limitless. Yuta's fatal flaw is essentially the time in which he has to learn how to operate within Gojo's body. It's not even a question that Yuta is falling short of what his sensei Gojo could do. And at times, he's not even used to the immense size and frame that Gojo fights with. Because apparently his arms are absurdly long and Yuta is not used to that. One round of switch training isn't nearly enough time to master the vessel that is Satoru Gojo. Yuta's techniques misfire. He messes up on blue, he has trouble with his control, and his lack of experience makes him anxious and easily overwhelmed by a crippled Sukuna. Yuta admits himself that from the outside, Limitless seems flawless and all-powerful, but you need the six eyes precise control of Cursed Energy to even handle the Limitless. And even then, it's still hard to control. So come to find out, the reason Gojo could so confidently say that he is the strongest is because he is Satoru Gojo. He is the man that has conquered the Limitless and became the greatest sorcerer of the modern era. Yuta has no clue on how to get a handle on the Limitless and really has no time to daydream or learn how to do everything because it's now or nothing. Yuta is fighting the strongest sorcerer in history and there's no chance to beat him if he does not know what he's doing. So with such a problem hanging over Yuta's mind, he is quickly running out of time and he has less than 5 minutes until Kenjaku's curse technique ends or who knows what will happen and less than 3 minutes 
till Yuta's unlimited void breaks and he loses the domain expansion battle. Even Sukuna understands that in such desperate circumstances, he is going to use hollow purple. And Yuta is able to perform this feat thanks to thoroughly cycling through Gojo's memory. Something very important about hollow purple and why Sukuna stopped it in the first attempt is because purple requires a long charge up time and the attack itself is so obvious. That's why Gojo's final hollow purple was casted in such a roundabout way but still effective. Gojo collided red and blue with an extended delay, perfectly executing purple's incantations just when the moment was right. Neither Sukuna or Maharaga could stop it by then. I don't think there's a chance in hell that Yuta could perform the same feat as Gojo, however he did do something much more simple in order to get the same result and give himself time for Hollow Purple to land. The sorcerer stored Inumaki's cursed speech in a voice recorder and Yuta caused it to play which forced Sukuna to freeze in place with the don't move command. So now, thanks to Inumaki and their strategy, Yuta can complete the incantations to fire a point-blank hollow purple right at Sukuna's dome. Now by all means, Sukuna is in checkmate. He's heavily nerfed, locked within the domain clash, no world slash, no Maharaga, and no ten shadows. And now he's frozen in place against the curse technique that he admitted himself that can fatally kill him. Now with all the odds stacked against him, surely if this were any other character whose name isn't Sukuna, I would think that this battle is completely over. But since this is Sukuna, then it's not surprising to think that he will find some way to survive this. Because honestly, this is the third hollow purple attack in which he's about to take on. And it's crazy enough that he's already survived two hollow purples plus the mountain of damage that he's already sustained. There is a bit of a running joke that Yuta would fumble so bad that the hollow purple would misfire or malfunction. Or maybe Sukuna would binding vow his way out of this. And as funny as that is, in this point in the battle, there is no time to fumble. Yuta has three minutes until the domain breaks and he has to significantly damage Sukuna to change the outcome of this fight. Remember, even if Yuta does not kill Sukuna with this purple, if the attack lands and Sukuna is heavily wounded, then Malevolent Shrine will break and Sukuna will get slammed by the full brunt of Unlimited Void's info shore hit. If that were to happen, Sukuna would probably lose. Just think, the unlimited void would damage his brain even further. Just less than 10 seconds was enough to render Malevolent Shrine impossible. And right now, Sukuna's already running on fumes with who knows how many binding vows in place just to keep everything in order for his domain expansion. An unlimited void is a superior curse technique compared to Malevolent Shrine's short hit. And currently, Sukuna can't even use Hollow Wicker Basket's hand signs to protect himself. And it's just speculation, but Sukuna also likely cannot use the 10 shadows to bail himself out either. On paper, Sukuna is cooked beyond belief. If I was Gege, I don't know how I'd write Sukuna out of this, but I do know that he is going to figure something out. I imagine if nothing else, Sukuna would be forced to activate the merger and such an event would spark the setup for the final arc. However, right now, Sukuna still has much unfinished business with Yuji. And if things worked out to where Yuta got rid of Sukuna's domain expansion, or damage Shakuna even further. In the state of Sukuna's reverse curse technique and cursed energy output, even if Yuta died in the process, just like his sensei Gojo, he'd have made a way for Yuji or even Toto to finish the battle together. On the other hand, if Sukuna regains his reverse curse technique output, or uses a binding vow to change either the conditions of his domain expansion or his curse technique conditions, then he would be the one to come out on top. And it's reached a point where I don't think we have anything left to give. Yuta in Gojo's body is the ultimate move. Despite his obvious setbacks, Yuta is the strongest character on their side. He's not like Gojo, he makes mistakes, he fumbles, he's not as skilled, and yeah, he even needs help from others, something the real Gojo never needed. Yet he is still their best bet versus Sukuna. 
He's stronger than Hikari, stronger than Maki, stronger than Yuji, and there's no greater sacrifice and no greater strength than Yuta has proven in Shinjuku after the death of their sensei. So whatever this purple does, it has to mean something significant to Sukuna, because if Yuta loses this domain expansion clash, I'm afraid they may just lose their best shot at taking Sukuna's head. So can Yuta save the series? Well, I don't think he will deliver the final blow to Sukuna. However, I have full confidence that he will pave the way for our sorcerer's victory. So yes, in his way, for the sake of both Gojo and Yuta's sacrifice, he can save them. But my brothers and sisters, tell me what you think. If Gojo were really here, would this already be over? Does Sukuna have anything else in his arsenal to reveal and save himself? And I look forward to how things will work out towards Sukuna's conclusion, chapter by chapter. But Gege is constantly treading a fine line in what Sukuna can make his way out of and how he does it. And I must say, it's quite interesting. But I trust that Yuta with Gojo's power will end Sukuna's streak of W's. But with that being said, that's it, my brothers and sisters. This has been Enemy Stand User, and I'll see you awesome guys in the next one. Bye bye